Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another video with me, Chaz Large, uh, about fixing stuff. And uh, today we're going to be hopefully looking at this Bush tablet, uh, which I purchased uh, for next to nothing on eBay as it was not working for parts. So uh, it came in uh, all packed up nicely, it's got its, its original box. Um, and uh, let's open it and see what else is inside. And uh, so inside we have basically the tablet. You can see I've unpacked this before because that's all that was in it is the tablet and some paperwork. Uh, Android tablet uh, with the name Bush on it because it's a name that's well known in the UK. So uh, basically uh, we just bought it on spec. Uh, it may be fixable, it may not. So let's just have a little look inside. And the first thing we need to do is to check and see if it turns on. And uh, yes, here we are, is the power switch. And generally on these Android tablets, so we've got a uh, power switch just here and volume up and down. And I presume that's uh, the microphone input because there's the camera. So uh, if we press and hold the power switch, uh, that should turn on if it's going to. No, nope. so we don't even know if it's got any charge in it. So let's see if it will take a charge. So there's the charging port at the end, uh, standard uh, small um, USB. Um, we'll bring in a little power tester. So you can see here, uh, so we've got um, five volts uh, from USB and then we've got the charging cable. So if we plug that in, um, let's see if that plugs in. Yep, it does. Oh look, it's taking, um, 0.4 one of an amp ah, and on the display we can see that it's actually uh, got the battery uh, displaying on there uh, showing uh, that it is taking a charge which is a good thing and also the fact that we've got uh, bits of the display illuminating um, so it would tend to indicate that the display is good as well oh there it's changed to 39 percent a nice little animated uh, graphic for the battery so that's uh, another good sign so whilst we've got power applied to it, let's uh, just try once more to see if it will turn on. And it won't. Okay, so uh, we'll disconnect. We've got power on it, so we can uh, take that power supply away. Now let's have a little look at the actual uh, device. And we can see that uh, if we look carefully around the side, we can actually see uh, some little dents and... Um, Somebody's had a bit of a nibble at this already. So see if they've opened it up. Yeah, there's a few little dents in there. Oh, there's a big dent in the back there. Somebody's had a go at that. All along that edge. Ah, oh, there's definitely a dent. And there's, I think there's a split just there in the power connector. So I think... Um, our best bet, as somebody's already tried to get that apart, uh, I think if uh, we ought to see if we can do the same. Oh, in fact, we can actually see that we're plastic there. Come out. So let's put uh, our duster down, and that will give us a base to work on. And there we are, and uh, looking at things, it's the back comes off of the rest of it. So let's just continue doing that along there so we don't split anything. And there we are, the back has come away. And so uh, we can see we've got uh, the main, I would guess that's probably the, uh, the graphics processor there. Um, and we've got uh, a bit of shielded and we've got this chip uh, which looks remarkably like a ram chip and there's a space for probably another ram chip there uh, as such uh, so the thing we need to check out are these buttons to see if those buttons are actually making contact um, the power button being the one at the top end so this is the power button here It seems to be making a good click and that's uh, one end of the volume control that's the other end of the volume control and I'm guessing this one is probably a reset so 
so that should do a full uh, power reset so let's just see having done a reset see if we've got any display coming up because we're still running on battery so maybe we should uh, actually do what not many people do and actually have a read of the manual yeah so having a look at the manual I can see that this particular button here is the reset button and um, going through the manual uh, it says in the manual uh, if your device doesn't turn on hold the on off button and the volume plus button until a black screen with options is displayed and then release that's volume plus and that's the on off so let's press those two together and hold them and see if we get anything on the display i'm guessing that the previous owner would have already tried this and uh, there's no change in the display I would have thought that would have been enough time for it to happen. But nothing there. Okay. Now we're still assuming obviously that these buttons are actually making connection. So it's quite possible they're not. Now I uh, don't really want to go messing about with it whilst we've got the battery connected. And it may be that uh, actually removing the battery uh, from this may actually uh, cause a reset of some kind because um, I've, I've come across something similar before that when uh, it's got the battery on all the time it's a bit like a CMOS battery in, um, in a PC that uh, if the CMOS battery is disconnected after a while uh, it will make it work when you reboot uh, because the, the memory is actually um, wiped so I'm just waiting for the soldering iron to warm up and then what we'll do is we'll disconnect the battery off of here and uh, give it a while and then reconnect it and, and see um, and if that doesn't do it what I think I'll do is I'll leave it to be uh, charged up so it's got a full battery charge uh, next time I do it so anyway that's what we're doing now the soldering iron is warmed up that like so and we'll leave that off for a couple of minutes and see what uh, see what happens okay so uh, it's been off for a few minutes let's just tag this battery back on again and just tentatively put it back on And we'll put the uh, the little button array into there, so we don't have to press it with um, screwdrivers and things. And we should be able to hold that in there. No reset screen or anything like that coming up. Okay, so uh, as I said, what we'll uh, probably do is we'll charge it up a bit later on, but I uh, just want to see if we can determine if the if the switch contacts are working. Now, before we fall into a, a deathly trap of that wire from the battery touching something it shouldn't, I think we'll just insulate that with a little bit of tape. That way we know that uh, we're not going to be shorting anything out accidentally with the battery or touching the battery onto a connection that doesn't need to have it on. So now we should be able to have a look at this edge here and see if we can peel back this tape. This doesn't look like this ever been removed. So there's a gentle bit of tape pulling going here and it may be that this is soldered to the board but it would be interesting to see if the actual uh, 
buttons themselves actually work. Ah, it's a little connector. You can just see in there. Get the camera nice and close and adjust it. That's flipped up. So now the ribbon cable should be able to be pulled out. And these are connectors. So we should at least be able to determine on those pins if we can short out some of the pins. Uh, find on with our test meter on those pins whether they will uh, make a connection. All right, I've got my uh, test leads which are fine tip test leads on uh, continuity. Now this is going to be really really hard, I think, to actually determine from here whether these connectors. I'm not sure. I'm even going to be able to get the test leads on onto any of these connections of course I'm going to be able to get on there but let's just, just go across and see if any of them are shorted really only the uh, power connector, the power switch here that we're really interested in. Um, I think what we'll try and do is to try and force that closed all the time and that whole switch assembly is glued in there. So I don't want to go prizing that out unnecessarily. I don't think with one hand I can hold those connections. Now luckily I remembered I've got a little clip. And all that. Yeah, I can actually, actually feel that holding it closed. So you should find then at least two of these pins on here I'm actually using the camera as a bit of a microscope because it's a bit difficult for me to see Let's try. 
So it doesn't look like that switch is actually making connection. I think the root problem with this is that switch. So let's see if we can take it apart and have a look at it. Now it's going to be a bit awkward to do this on camera so I'm going to see if I can just take it apart um, and uh, see if we can see if it's the actual contacts of the switch which is just not working. Okay so I've, I've uh, got really close up to these connections um, with my glasses on, my uh, super magnifying glasses on and I've gone through with that uh, switch pressed in with the um, clip that's been pressed in as though it was making contact and none of these are shorting so I'm guessing that this switch is somehow faulty so I'm going to see if I can somehow ease that switch out of there we'll just it's probably held in by double-sided tape of some kind so we'll just gently push the screwdriver behind it Yep, that's coming out. We can actually have a look at this switch. Because it's got a backing plane and it's got um, cover over the top. And it's that cover over the top which is obscuring the um, let's just see if it will adhere to that and then we may be able to just gently tease the cover apart and we've got another loose well look at that, that's gently coming across, let me just see if I can better focus the camera so I'll just be able to put the screwdriver into the, the cover there there's the contact. At least if nothing else I can work out what the contacts are and maybe come up with some form of alternative switch. Or maybe if I can confirm that by shorting these two together we may actually make a contact. So that's not going to work. So I think what we need to do is to employ a little bit of sellotape. Let's have a little bit of sellotape just to hold that down. And another bit to hold that in place. connectors are on this side let's see if we can just pin that down that's good so now we should be able to do a continuity check get the light in a little bit better on this and we'll start to pick up the flicker now because we've got uh, the 240 volt bright LED on it's annoying new camera and it's getting quicker and it shouldn't have there we are so I should now be able to put let me just make sure it's on beat mode I should be able to put the meter on one side here and go along these switches till I find oh. There's no connection. Any of those? Just see. I don't think that's. I think that's just. Let's go to the middle connection. Ah, there we go. Number two. Like 
button down is two is the switch middle and the switch outer is not making any connection now that would be switch outer those two aren't connected does that connect to that right, does this So what it looks like is this outer connection here that outer connection there is not connecting to the ribbon so could it be that this ribbon is broken somewhere in here Where should it go? That's the question there. So, as we've got so much of this off, and it's we need to find out where that ribbon is. Let's pull the rest of it off. It's tape. We can always stick it back on if it's sticky. Just get rid of that bit of summer tape for a minute. take it back as far as that. There's a nice crease in that ribbon there. Right, so now we can see that this outer you can actually see DC lighting, that's a bit better. We can actually see on here we've got trace at the back of this tape. One side of that trace should be connected to one of these connections. Now, is it that one? To be honest, I honestly can't see it myself. It's just you can sometimes be careful. Does that connect to that? No. So that connects to that, so it's definitely on there. That one. You know what I'm thinking is that one of these will be a common. to be so I'll tell you what let's say fiddling around let's peel all of this off and then peel all these buttons these common to each other yes no no ah, those two are 
Interesting. So that one and that one is common. That one and that one is common. So there's a little screw connector there. So does that one... So let's try the back on. Alright, so one, two, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, down four with an outer volume axis so those because those two are volume the so volume plus is it that one no, that's volume so one is volume minus the so one is volume plus no minus one is volume minus. Two we know is a switch. Let's just double check that we've got that. No, I wasn't sure it's was anything else. Yeah. Three. There's volume plus. is reset plus reset so six must be the common one we're looking for which is not connecting so what we seem to have ended up with on here is the pin outs are Pin 1 is volume minus, pin 2 is power switch, pin 3 is volume plus, pin 4 is volume common, 5 is reset and 6 seems to be the reset and a power common, which although the two connect to each other are not connected on that ribbon, so I suspect that ribbon cable um, is where the problem lies. Now, we have uh, several ways of attacking this. Um, probably the easiest way may be to solder a wire from that um, just to see if it's going to work solder a thin wire to one side of that reset switch um, and then solder it to the uh, the connector on here but that is going to be a fine bit of soldering I don't think if that ribbon cable is broken which I suspect is broken round about there where the bends are or maybe there um, I don't think I'm going to be able to fix that so because um, it's folded over you see and I just don't think that there's going to be any way any latitude of doing any kind of um, repair of the, the ribbon cable so what we've got to do is to uh, see what we can do about soldering a wire onto uh, pin 6 of that um, for um, testing purposes. 
Right, so what I've identified, as I said, is these are the pinouts, and I've now got up close and personal to this uh, connector, and I've discovered that the pin that we want, which is uh, pin 6 in my terminology, which is the, the reset and power common uh, connection. So that first test pin, the, uh, that first pin there, which is the connection for number 6, is connected to ground so I should be able to tag a wire onto there and then onto um, the uh, common which is here on the reset switch and the power switch which we'll just uh, double check again is actually joined together yeah and hopefully I can then um, fire it up and see what happens so what I've used for uh, doing test connections and things um, for ages has been um, bits of um, Ethernet cable, uh, which if you uh, strip it back, it's just a single core cable. So you should be able to uh, just clean off the end like so. And that's just enough uh, and it's, it's solid. So it makes it easier than uh, um, bits of uh, flexible cable or wire, thin wire cable. I've got some very thin wire cable which I may use but this is just purely for a test to see uh, how that's going to work. So let's reapply our switches, switch contacts onto here. that switch okay it's gonna come up there again aren't it? yeah perhaps this wire is too perhaps this wire is too stiff I need to get some other thinner wire right Got some very fine wire now. So let's desolder that leg from there. Let's see if we can strip this back without losing it. Oh, look how thin that is. Really thin that wire. Bring the iron. Thin the wire. Fairly tuggable. Check continuity. And then, yep. And let's see if we can attach this wire. There's a little bit of the self adhesive that's on there. Let's get around the back end of this. Connection, put it on there, shall we? 
Reset switch. That makes it look like a good connection. And again, check continuity between the outer part of that reset switch and that pin, which it is making. So now, I'm going to stick it from this budget. And of course, which was mounted that way up with the fold going in like that. We should be able to push that back into to that wire very slightly. Push that back into there, put down the clamp. Oh! Right, we've got one of two chances in this respect. Put the camera back up there. In order to focus it for a minute. We'll reconnect the battery to the battery terminal, which is here. Not bear my fingers, let's use a pair of pliers and we'll get it in exactly the right place. There we go. Battery reconnected. Power switch pressed. Not another. Well, maybe it needs hot. Well, sometimes these need a long press. Yay! Look at that. Should have pressed it longer. Bush powered by Android. We have fixed it. Taking its while, doing what it's got to do. The display is sort of blurring across, you can see. That's presumably loading the operating system. I don't know how long this normally would take to, uh, to load up. Now remember, I did disconnect the battery. So uh, it could be that it's having to do a lot of reloading of stuff I don't know <laughs> seems to be taking a long time touchscreen doesn't seem to be doing anything um, I suppose it could be that uh, it's waiting for me to do something oh flat it flickered I think it's actually still doing a boot up sequence of some kind Yay! There it is. Battery saver is on Friday the 1st of January. So, ah, oh, the touchscreen works. So whatever it had in there. And it works. So there is a going to be a settings like there is on the phone, I would guess. Anyway, for now, the point is, it is working. So let's just press the power off. Okay. So I think what we need to do now is to see if we can reassemble it with that wire in place um, so that it can be put back together. But oh, I'm well pleased with that at the moment, anyway, at least. And we've also diagnosed the wiring for that um, set of buttons. I think we may have uh, inadvertently reset it. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's uh, let's 
do that let's take the battery off again whilst we work on it down by the side of all this you don't have to take it all off you need to reattach the battery best way of putting this back together is put the buttons into there first I'm not sure I'll put them on like that they're going to fall out Okay. Press and hold power. And there she put, there she goes. Well I'm really quite pleased with that. Um, being able to diagnose a faulty ribbon cable on the switch, uh, the power switch, and uh, getting it to um, identifying where the pin connections go to uh, simple you know I mean those switches really are just literally contacts there's no uh, you know technology involved in that ribbon cable it's just purely a pair of contacts um, and as we can see now it's uh, it's actually booted up uh, oh the displays just disappeared let me just quickly power it back on see if there we are so we've got a time come up and um, we presumably got to set over it says um, Friday the 1st of January so obviously we need to reset it so uh, quick look at the manual uh, so it's 74% let's hold the power button uh, a bit longer one two three there we are it's starting up and there we are oh look we have a doggy and it's uh hmm, is that uh, is that what was uh on there before so it has started up in portrait mode so it still says friday the first of january 0258 so let's uh, go to wi-fi and there we can connect to my wi-fi and it should now ask for my uh, passcode which uh, we shall enter and click connect saved it on my thing and it's obtaining an IP address let's get the old camera a bit closer Saturday 7th of November so it is now updated so let's go that should be the back button now I'm guessing that possibly that dog picture is from the previous owner. Um, we've got Discord on there, we've got Helix Jump. I think what I'm going to have to do is obviously uh, investigate uh, a little bit more and erase any personal data that may be on this. Um, so uh, and, and take it off onto uh, another device if I can uh, so that uh, if there's anything on here that the previous owner may be missing um, thinking obviously that it wouldn't boot it's dead whatever they could well e easily have thought that it is uh, 
it's had it and they've lost their data but uh, that's not a, a picture uh, it's a, pic a lovely picture of a nice um, dog um, not too sure what type of dog that is um, but it's a nice dog picture um, uh, it's got Bluetooth enabled uh, there was some personal data on there I saw come up uh, so we will uh, we will wipe this uh, or reset it I think is the uh, answer uh, to get it to uh, back to factory default but we'll check out in case there's any personal data but anyway it seems to be uh, that um, the little fix of the power switch has worked so thanks every uh, thanks for watching everybody and uh, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this little video um, and I hope that uh, the sound and the picture has got a little bit better since the last time got a new camera still getting used to it the uh, the one on the bench this one here still getting used to it uh, but it's a it's a very highly recommended camera I saw it on uh, adamant IT um, uh, he uses it to, for his bench and I've done a similar sort of thing to what he uses with a, a microphone stand and uh, bolted it onto the front there so I'm still getting used to it but I think uh, my main problem uh, is at the moment is lighting um, so I've got some LED lights which I've put together cobbled together with bits and pieces uh, and I think I need to make a bit of an investment into uh, some better lighting anyway that's it for now um, hope you've enjoyed this I've got uh, quite a few other things on the cards to uh, to fix and uh, very grateful to people sending me stuff to uh, to have a go at fixing uh, and uh, uh, I will see you on the next one so take care keep well keep happy and keep watching bye bye Thank you.